Ciao everybody, this is Daniele Luciano Mosco of Parola de Mor Ministries. God bless you today and all your loved ones in Jesus' name. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a title message, The Fawn in Apostle Paul's Flesh. I repeat, The Fawn in Apostle Paul's Flesh. I don't know about you in particularly, but I love the story and testimony of Apostle Paul, who previously was Saul of Tarsus. In the New Testament book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 10, it reads, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities than that of the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. In reading these holy scriptures, we can perceive this thorn in the flesh of Apostle Paul is said to be a messenger of Satan which he, Satan, the devil, sent for evil. But God designed it, allowed it, and overruled it for good. When a Christian, born again of the spirit of the true and living God, is afflicted with thorns in the flesh, he should give himself over completely to prayer. For prayer is the key that can unlock all doors in the spiritual realm. For God is the God of the supernatural realm that controls our physical realm. Amen. Apostle Paul's testimony gives an account of the method God took to keep him humble and to prevent his pride being lifted above measure. On account of the supernatural visions and revelations that he, Paul, had during his remarkable ministry. Although we are not told or cannot find in the Holy Bible what this thorn in the flesh was, whether it was some great trouble or some great temptation, all we have is the reassuring confidence that God always brings good out of evil, even when the devil, the enemy, means it for evil and harm in our daily lives. For God brings beauty from dark ashes, for he is our beautiful landscape gardener, cultivating our lives daily into a sweet smelling fragrance of pot pourri all for his glory amen concerning apostle paul we know he suffered many many afflictions trials and tests of faith perhaps he also suffered from headaches body pains or maybe even sight issues this is particularly supported by many scholars or theologians that when Paul was first called Saul, the Lord Jesus Christ took away Saul's sight on the Damascus road, leaving him blind for a few days before Saul eventually was given a new name of Apostle Paul. We must learn that in the midst of our daily adverse situations and tests of faith, when we too face spiritual demons and Philistine giants in our own Christian lives, we should not lose focus of the fact that God is much bigger and he is far more powerful and he is much mightier than any attack of the devil, Satan. Amen. God kept Apostle Paul in touch with his limitations, for Paul had been given extraordinary revelations. He had access to some top secret things from the undisputed CEO of heaven, the boss of heaven, our Lord God Almighty, the Yahweh God, the God of all flesh. 
it wouldn't have been surprising if Paul started thinking a bit too highly of himself, taking credit for his success. So he was given the blessing of a handicap, a messenger of Satan to buffet him with a thorn in his flesh, to simply prevent him becoming proud and arrogant. God did not give Paul his thorn, as with Old Testament Job. God allowed the devil to afflict Paul, for Paul's affliction kept him from relying on self and kept him trusting solely in God's supernatural miracle wonder-working power. Amen. In the book of James, chapter 1, verses 2 to 6, it reads, We should count it all joy when we fall into various trials or thorns, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. Amen. Some people become defined by their hardships, while others rise above their pain. Maybe you know people with handicaps who don't think of themselves as handicapped. I heard of a soldier who returned from Iraq who lost a leg. He got fitted for prosthesis and ran a marathon. Do we accept our limitations or do we constantly complain about them? We may even discover some benefits from our thorns. God is discovered not so much through miraculous displays of supernatural power, but through times of great suffering, testing, and human weakness. Satan wants us, especially born-again Christians, to give up on life and God and throw in the towel, become bitter, and cease living for God. The Lord sometimes shapes his beloved saints on the devil's anvil, for God wants us to triumph over our weaknesses and afflictions and through them to become more compassionate and effective in encouraging others. From Paul's life, we learn that those whom God chooses to be great in his kingdom often receive Satan's fawn. While Satan pays little attention to the carnal, spiritual babe in Christ, Lest he jar them free from complacency, he is quick to persecute those born-again Christians whom God has chosen to use their spiritual gifts to serve the Lord and glorify him. If God thought Paul needed a thorn to keep him from becoming conceited and chaos reigning in his life, how much more do we need one as well? Perseverance of trials and tribulations, then, is not only the key to spiritual maturity, but also the key to seeing the power of God demonstrated in one's life. What keeps many Christians from accomplishing what God has empowered them to do is not a lack of opportunity, but simply an unwillingness to pay the cost of being his beloved disciple. The Lord Jesus Christ will not ask one to suffer for suffering's sake, but will ask those he bought at a price to embrace their thorns as necessary to not only keep them from pride and arrogance, but also to have their light shine so brightly that others will see their deeds in weakness and glorify the God, the Father in heaven. Amen. So, if being successful in ministry is attainable only by God, then the only thing holding one back in realizing that spiritual greatness is not the holiness of others, but our lack of desire to pay the price. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the pearl of great price. Let us pray now. Lord Jesus Christ, Thank you for the thorns in my life that keep me sober and alert. Thank you for giving us the spirit of discernment to always discern the bad from the good and to pray at all times by resisting temptation and keeping us safe from all of the foulest snares of our enemy, the devil. We realize, Lord, there is a price to pay. And as your beloved Christian children, you said we would suffer persecution for our faith in you. We ask for more of your love, grace, 
mercy, wisdom and understanding to keep us more humble with pure contrite hearts so that we do not become conceited or proud or boastful. May we continue to decrease, Lord, while you, Lord Jesus Christ, continue to increase as we hallowed your name. Lead us by your precious Holy Spirit at all times to carry out your perfect will for our lives here on planet Earth before your second coming for your beloved church, the Bride in Christ. This we ask in your loving and faithful name we have all prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. If you have enjoyed listening to this message today, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, give us a like or even comment. We love to hear your comments from all over the world. So be encouraged today. God bless you in Jesus' name and all your loved ones in Jesus' name. Ciao for now. Arrivederci. Bye-bye.